Financial Survival Network, helping you survive and thrive in the new economy. Go to carrylutz.com and sign up for 30 free micro trainings on financial survival. Fourteen ninety WGCH. This is Carrie Lutz. You're listening to the Financial Survival Network. Time for another Triple Lutz report. Amazing thing happened Monday night. The internet was a buzz with an interview that Jim Sinclair gave. In it, he was discussing a meeting taking place on Tuesday of the International Swap Dealers Association, whereby they were going to decide whether or not the debt deal, the debt forgiveness, the haircut, given or to be given on Greek sovereign debt in the range of 50 to 70 percent was an event of default. And this is an important matter because if they were to determine that yes it was a default it would trigger all the credit default swaps and the banks would suffer horrendous losses and this would become a precedent for all the other deals taking place now first you need to know what a credit default swap is and that is simply an insurance policy over the counter written by a financial institution for someone who is effectively betting or hedging against the potential of a default by a borrower. Pretty simple insurance contract. Now, where it gets tricky is that the person purchasing that contract doesn't necessarily have to own the underlying security. They can just effectively make a bet on default. And this is the equivalent if you had a neighbor that you didn't like and you decided, you know what, I'm going to take out a fire insurance policy on their home, and I'm going to take out a life insurance policy on them as well. And then you basically, one evening, you've got the policy, you go over there while they're sleeping, you take a Molotov cocktail, throw it through the window, and blow the place up and kill them all, and then you go cash in the policy. All right? There's obviously something wrong with that scenario. In uh, English jurisprudence, you must have what's called an insurable interest. And that means that you've got to be related to the person, husband, wife, for example. You need to own the property. Strangers can't go insuring strangers, taking out life insurance policies on them because that would lead to all sorts of nefarious outcomes and it's against public policy. But for whatever reason, they failed to see the analogy here with credit default swaps. So if you just want to bet on something is going to default or or whatever, you know, there's a lot of these derivatives around, you can do it. And this is one of the problems involved. So Sinclair is saying that if the ISDA rules that it is a default, then these five major banks, and we all know who they are, are insolvent and they're going to require a bailout. It's going to trigger a financial disaster, financial collapse potentially. So as a result, who runs the ISDA? The five major banks who stand to suffer most from the ruling of a default on the Greek sovereign debt. So there's no possible way that these guys are going to rule it a default. They're going to come up with a technicality that it's a, a voluntary debt renegotiation doesn't constitute a default. Now, I've been thinking about these credit default swaps for quite a while. Uh, like I said, my best inspiration comes when my Hungarian trainer, Caitlin, is working my butt off at the gym. Something about the oxygen and the endorphins flying that just makes think certain things. It gives me a clarity. It can't explain it. I'm not advocating everybody work out, although I think it's a good habit to get into because keeping muscle mass and strength is very important as you get older. But anyway, I'm not here to talk about health. 
The fact of the matter is, these credit default swaps, by last count, there's somewhere around anywhere from 750 trillion, and we're talking derivatives, 750 trillion of them to 1.2 quadrillion. In any event, we got about 200 trillion more of them written last year, and they're growing like a cancer. The banks love them because they get to write these policies effectively, and hopefully, uh, as long as they never have to pay off on them, they're extremely profitable. If you got to pay off, you could wind up like AIG, dead in the water. So Sinclair claims that 97% of all the sovereign CDSs have been written by these five major banks. And uh, there's also equity default, credit default swaps. There's a whole plethora of these financial instruments. And I always bring up Warren Buffett, who called them weapons of mass financial destruction. So theoretically, declaring Greece in default could bankrupt these banks. And I've talked about the history of the word bankrupt. It goes back to the Middle Ages, to the money changers, when they would bust out, when they'd go broke, they worked in this open air market and they had a table. And when they went broke, when they couldn't honor their, their debts, the table was broken. So bankrupt means broken table. But in any event, they're never going to pay these credit default swaps. The government will never allow it to be done. They should have been voided out a long time ago, but because Wall Street owns Washington, because the banks own Washington and Washington works for them, they've just been allowed to metastasize. And we're getting to the point where we're so over levered that any little thing, even a country as relatively insignificant as Greece, can set off a calamity. So the fact is, in this instance, they're going to say it's a voluntary debt renegotiation, and they're not going to pay them off. And this will undermine faith in the market, which has been declining anyway since MF Global. And people aren't going to be buying these CDSs. And as a result, they're not going to have the false sense of security to buy the sovereign debt because they can't buy insurance on it. It's like you want to buy a house, you want to get a mortgage, the bank makes you get insurance on your home so that if it burns down or there's a calamity, the bank's mortgage gets paid off. But just imagine if the bank lost faith in all the property insurers in the world. Do you think they'd be issuing mortgages? Perhaps, but if they did, the cost would go way up. Well, here the investors are going to lose faith in the issuers of CDSs, of derivatives. And what's going to happen? It's going to lead to an unraveling of the system. We already started it with MF Global, where all those customers, their funds were effectively stolen by MF Global and used to satisfy other obligations in direct contravention of the law. And effectively, the account holders seem to be losing about 30% of their total funds. Normally, when somebody steals something from you and they sell it or give it to somebody else, even if that person doesn't know that it was stolen goods, it's a deeply ingrained concept of it's a deeply ingrained concept of the English common law and American jurisprudence a thief can never pass good title so if they gave your collateral your funds to a creditor then they stole them from you wrongly they commingled they converted your money to theirs and gave it to a creditor, the creditor should be forced to pay it back. That's English common law. But in effect, we're in an age of lawlessness. None of the laws apply, and people are seeing their property rights destroyed. 
and they're seeing that they don't have protection from fraud and from forcible taking of their property. And they have no form of redress. They have no ability to go to court and get their property back. This is just another step. None of those credit default swaps are ever going to be paid off. There's no question in my mind they will all be repudiated, whether legally or otherwise. They're not going to be paid off. They should have been prevented. It should have been stopped a long time ago. Certainly after AIG, they should have just outlawed the thing and required anybody purchasing one to have a legitimate insurable interest and that they could only insure the security up to their cost and no greater so that it wouldn't allow speculators to effectively profit and help bring about the events that they're insuring against. That can't be a good thing. So I'd like to know from Jim Sinclair where that 97% number come from. Is it accurate? Because I haven't seen it before. And does he believe that push comes to shove, any of these credit default swaps will ever be paid off? Because I don't believe they're going to be honored. I think it will have turned out to be just another Wall Street inspired Ponzi game. And that's the way it's going to end up. I don't see any other way. And it will simply hasten the ultimate demise of the current financial system, which has been self-destructing for at least the past four years and arguably since 1971. This is Kerry Lutz at another Triple Lutz Report, signing off.